I want to just take a, a few brief moments to give you the broader uh, view of the World Post and, and what it's about and what its mission is, what its ambitions are. Uh, the, the World Post was born a little over a year ago, as was mentioned, in Davos in Switzerland. Uh, the idea being that uh, we needed something to bridge the gap that's emerging in the global media. On the one hand, uh, there's a the contradiction and there's a paradox. On the one hand, the world is becoming more interdependent. Uh, on the other hand, the me media is moving in the other direction, deglobalizing, renationalizing, relocalizing, and even tribalizing. So the paradox is that the age of information is becoming the age of non-communication communication across borders, political, ideological, and cultural. The World Post aims to try to bridge this gap with a global platform of cross-pollination by bringing in contributors from all around the world, looking at the world from around instead of looking out from a national perspective. It is often said that the internet is a global thinking circuit. The internet is global and it's a circuit, but it's not thinking yet, and we hope to contribute to that, uh, to that process. So far, the demand for this type of new journalism, I would say new global journalism, seems to be out there. Uh, since launching uh, last year, we now have 28 million monthly views. Conferences like this are part of the process. Now, every day, the World Post chronicles the long arc uh, of what we see as two competing futures. Ariana alluded to this, and so did Nicholas a world coming together and a world falling apart. Because of converging technological advance from digital connectivity to regenerative medicine to artificial intelligence, we have the chance to spread unprecedented health, prosperity, and opportunity to all corners of the planet. Yet, all of us know, just looking around, that pervasive disruption is taking place associated with globalization and technological revolution. It's generating a reactive fragmentation the signs of splintering are everywhere. Revived nationalisms, the reappearance of geopolitical blocks, ardent religious warfare, and bitter partisanship that threaten to dash this promise uh, of a uh, technologically convergent future. Can any of, us, any of us forget that after those magnificent industrial expos uh, at the turn of the 20th century, expos about industrial arts, that World War II ensued within uh, very few months uh, in 1914. Now, in this conference, we are focusing on one vector of these competing futures that will affect us all personally, our families, and our communities, and that is the future of work and the workplace. There are many questions that we'll address here. Are we seeing the emergence of a new economic model, the sharing and collaborative economy, where everyone is an entrepreneur? Will robots actually humanize the workplace by getting rid of rote a task and rote work, leaving room for creativity and mindfulness? How do we integrate our own lives, our families, and our communities into a perpetually innovating tech-driven knowledge economy? Can social media networks, uh, and me can social media and networks transform rigid time schedules with a new flexibility allowing work to come back into the home from the office and the factory? Will we find meaningful work with purpose and dignity and with enough to live on? Is productivity and wealth creation being divorced from employment? Will there be enough jobs for all those willing to work? And will those willing to work have the skills needed? These are just some of the questions that we will address in the coming two days in order to figure out where we want to go in the future, what kind of future we want, and what kind of future we can expect.